Claudine Gay, the president of Harvard University, resigned from her position following a concerted right-wing campaign against her. This right-wing campaign was allegedly attacking her on the basis of accusations of plagiarism, but comes a month after a controversial hearing in which the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and the University of Pennsylvania were called before Congress to testify about pro-Palestine organizing that had been happening on their college campuses. In particular, chants that students had been using, including From the River to the Sea and Globalize the Intifada, were framed as calling for the genocide of Jewish people. And the presidents were interrogated about whether or not they would punish their students who used these chants with disciplinary action. Claudine Gay herself refused to say if these students would face disciplinary action, but she did not dispute the framing that these chants were calling for the genocide of Jewish people and called them hateful, reckless, and offensive speech. To talk about what Claudine Gay's resignation means for student organizers on campus, People's Dispatch spoke to Prince Williams, an undergraduate Harvard organizer who has been active in the Palestine Solidarity Movement about the censorship and attacks that students have faced from the right wing, from rich alums, and from the Harvard administration. Could you talk about any censorship that you've faced as a student organizer? Since I've been on campus, a lot of the tactics of the university have always been to ignore us. Um, that's That's been their sort of number one tactic since I've been on campus. I've noticed is that the university usually settles for just ignoring our demands, ignoring our calls for action, change, um, and just, yeah, kind of pretending that we don't exist. Um, but over the last few months, they haven't been able to do that because our policy, our organizing around Palestine has got national and international attention. Um, and that's caused university leadership and the corporation to actually pay attention to us. Um, and that, and the response to that is how can we repress these student organizers, um, and get the heat off the university and the corporation, um, because of the backlash that has came from our organizing for um, Palestine. And so we had a proctor, um, a first year proctor at Harvard be fired, um, Elam. We've had several students, including myself, be ad boarded, which is Harvard's um, disciplinary process um, that basically uh, cases of potential violations of Harvard Code of Conduct go through the administrative board. So uh, around a dozen or so um, Harvard students, Palestinian organizers have have been ad boarded. Um, and we've also had situations where um, our, our days of action um, or our rallies and stuff has been, basically they'll close the gates to the yard or find ways to restrict our direct actions on campus. Um, and again, all of these repression tactics have have ramped up and they're actually they're cracking down on us because of that national and international attention that we've brought to the Palestine issue. What do you make of Claudine Gay's behavior at the infamous university president's hearing? I think the 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 hearing itself one was crafted by congressional members. Um in the far right to basically trap and gotcha these university presidents um, and accept their false premises about our intentions as organizers. Um, and ultimately that resulted in Claudine um, Gay being, you know, effectively fired as university president. She she couldn't say flat out that I don't, my students are not calling for the genocide of the Jewish people, for instance, when they say from the river to the sea or Antifada. She didn't want to open that bottle. Um, and maybe she doesn't even believe that. Um, but she she actively accepted the premises of the far right and saying that we were calling for those, for the genocide of the Jewish people, 
when we're not, when we say from the river to the sea or Antifada, we're calling for Palestinian liberation um, and into apartheid and occupation. But because these university presidents won't even go that far in, in to defend us, just that semblance of saying we're not calling for genocide of people, um, they embarrass themselves um, and put put their own jobs in jeopardy. They lost their jobs, at least two of them, uh, two of the university presidents, because they weren't willing to be in good faith about what we're actually saying, what we're actually calling for. Um, and I think that's ultimately why the hearing went the way it did, because the presidents weren't willing to actually be in good faith and say what the students on their campus are actually advocating for. What do you think about Claudine Gay's resignation and the right-wing campaign against her? Us as student organizers have heard um, out of the mouths of administrators that the donors don't run the university. Um, and then this happens. And then they're, they're ousted because of angry billionaire donors um, who don't like how administrators didn't crack down hard enough on student organizers. Um, so I think ultimately Claudine's resignation is one, a sign that yes, these billionaire donors have tremendous influence over our universities. And if they can use one, they use extremely racist um, attacks on Claudine since she was appointed um, president. It was announced that she was appointed but it's also true that the the attacks on her were in response to her not being Zionist enough on campus and taking stronger action against pro-Palestinian organizers. Um, so I think there's both those things can be true um, and that they are true that Claudine was a, like a victim of extreme anti-blackness um ever since she entered her role as president but at the same time because she didn't want to play ball with the zionists um in such of an aggressive way that they wanted her to she was punished for that and if she can be effectively removed from her position for not for not taking that extremist position then the the future of, of acad academic freedom, the future of what they can do to faculty, what they can do to our courses, like how can they influence the university if they have enough power to dictate who's the president, um, basically at this point. Um, that's, that's a bleak future in how our universities will run and operate moving forward using Trojan horses of plagiarism to attack curricula to a to a to a attack DEI and all these other things um when it was never about her her intellectual credentials it never was it was all about the agenda behind it um and they used her plagiarism case as a pretext um, for everything that they're actually going after which they're they're admitting right now in public during the university hearing in Congress, None of the presidents mentioned pro-Palestine and Arab students being targeted in the U.S., including three Palestinian students shot last month. What is your reaction to this? This is something that we consistently bring up in our organizing. Um, we had a week of action um, after the weekend. Those three Palestinian students were shot in Vermont, and we explicitly said the the type of language, for instance, saying from the river to the sea is anti-Semitic um, and the ways that administrators and university leadership talk about pro-Palestinian organizers contributes to Islamophobia, to anti-Palestinian sentiment that ultimately feeds violence like here at home on us as organizers. Plenty of organizers that I know have gotten have been getting death threats um, on top of the the doxing and exposing people's addresses, um, pieces, identification, things like that. And from day one, um, 
President Gay wouldn't even say the word Palestine at times, um, let alone actively naming the the legitimate attacks that have been going on against Muslim and Arab students on and off campus. We've had someone on Harvard's campus be chased with a knife. Um, we've had the wife of a faculty member harass a student, um, uh, econ professor's wife harass a student on video. Um, all of these things, we, we keep getting the accusation of anti-Semitism, but there's material Islamophobia that cannot be denied, um, that just keep popping up, that they keep denying, which is just evidence of their the hypocrisy of this idea that they care about student safety and protection when there's clearly students under attack um, in this moment that they're completely ignoring, that they're not valuing the safety of these students. Why do you think that the student movement for Palestine is under such intense scrutiny? I think just like those who are attacking us, we understand as student organizers our historical tradition. Um, even just looking at the United States, although this is a global phenomenon, young people have always been a very focal part of social movements um, going back decades and decades. Um, a lot of us are students and um, just admirers of the young people of the civil rights movement, of the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa, um, and the various social movements that came after the McCarthy era, um, and those who were pushing back against American imperialism, against Jim Crow and apartheid here, um, and all these systems that still exist and that are cropping up in various places around the world um, and have these global implications. So young people have always been a powerful demographic in leading social movements and pushing for change and pushing beyond the boundaries of what they see because we are the future. We, we have to inherit this world, these systems, our society, and we want, we want better. Young people are always gonna want better than what they see. Um, and clearly right now in a moment where not just the genocide happening in Gaza, young people are making the connections of, for instance, why is billions and billions of dollars continually pumped into the war machine, but not our futures, not our education, not our care, not our housing, um, and making those connections of why our futures look so bleak, yet there's so much investment in human suffering um, that's completely unnecessary. And so I think our enemies recognize that. Our enemies recognize the power of young people and the historical power that young people have always possessed in trying to be historical agents for social change, and that's no different now. For more coverage of people's movements and international political news, visit peoplesdispatch.org, check out our YouTube channel, and follow us at People's Dispatch on Telegram, Twitter, and Instagram.